Now back to the point, one thing is vital to mention, how Jesus and religion are on opposite spectrums. See, one's the work of God, but one's a man-made invention. See, one is the cure, but the other's the infection. See, because religion says do, Jesus says done. Religion says slave, Jesus says son. Religion puts you in bondage, while Jesus sets you free. Religion makes you blind, but Jesus Do makes you see. Do not lose your faith. Jesus is coming. Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again. You can count on it, he is coming back. Secondly, while we don't know the day and the hour of his return, we can know it's near. Jesus said, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Third, you're not alone. Tens of thousands of sincere Christians have made the same mistake in the past, and they've gone on to be wonderful servants of God. Finally, don't give up now. We are too close to home. Jesus said, he that endures to the end, the same will be saved. God commands you to repent in the Bible to forsake you your wickedness. God will judge people. And it's kind of like they're inviting a conspiracy to, to, uh, to make everybody question what happened. But there's a, there has to be a certain level of, like, I, I, I'm a proponent of critical thinking, you know what I'm saying? So I think that everybody should be critical. What accomplishments have they got out of there? Well, they, uh, you know, they have um, conducted research that uh, has... I mean, what, is it, what has been achieved? I've heard nothing. Um, Are you angry that there's a possibility it could move to Kansas? I wouldn't use the word angry. I am troubled by that. Uh, and in fact, I have been working to try to keep the facility open in, 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 on Plum Island. Aren't you concerned, though, that if something could go wrong at this place and what the results of it could be? Plum Island um, is... Um, <clears throat> Here are your coffins, which you paid for with your tax money. There are millions of them waiting for you in different states across the country. So there's a certain level of like hypocrisy, you know what I'm saying? A certain level of like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. These two opposing kind of forces coming exactly. together to make duality. people who they are, right? The duality of mankind, right? So I, I accept that. I embrace that, right? The core for me is I don't want to be in the in the streets fighting a civil war, running down the street with an AK-47 shooting at the National Guard. Exactly. Negativity is not the answer and we can't be fighting our brothers and sisters. The master plan of this satanic group of puppets is a new world order. Their goal is to kill 90% of the world's population so they can better control the rest of us and they will start in America. The military academic industrial complex. That's a new one to me, but it says a lot. Combine fear, greed, and our tax dollars, and you've got a bio-warfare industry that's out of control. It's a conspiracy, all right, and it poses a bigger threat to this nation than any terror group. There's more than 1,300 of these germ labs across the country. That means one of them is probably upwind from you. Have you ever wondered what you would do to frighten Lazarus after he'd been raised from the dead? What would you do to threaten him? Lazarus, I'm going to kill you? Caligula said, I'm going to kill you. He says, ha ha ha. And he says, stop ha 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 I'm going to kill you as I'm killing all the Christians. He doubles over and uncontrollable laughter comes up for air and says, Caligula, haven't you heard? Death is dead. Death is dead. Ha!
how do you frighten somebody who's already been there and knows the one who's going to let him out? But just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's hand, of breathing new air and finding it celestial. of waking up in glory and finding it home. Ladies and gentlemen, your hope and mine in Christ is that one day we will be with God. One day we will be with Him. We look back upon history and what do we see? Empires rising and falling. Revolutions and counter-revolutions, wealth accumulated and wealth dispersed. Shakespeare has spoken of the rise and fall of great ones that ebb and flow with the moon. I've heard a crazed, cracked Austrian announce to the world the establishment of a German Reich that would last a thousand years. I've seen an Italian clown saying he was going to stop and restart the calendar with his own ascension to power. I have seen America more wealthier and in terms of military weaponry more powerful than the rest of the world put together so that had the American people so desired they could have outdone a Caesar or an Alexander in the range and scale of their conquest. Hitler and Mussolini dead remembered only in infamy. Stalin is a forbidden name in the regime he helped found and dominate for some three decades. America is haunted by fears of running out of the precious fluids that keeps her motorways roaring and the smog settling. All in one lifetime, all in one lifetime, all gone with the wind. Behind the debris of the fallings of our solemn supermen and imperial diplomatists lies the gigantic figure of one person because of whom by whom, in whom, and through whom mankind may still survive the person of Jesus Christ. Came across to the winning side, never to become deserters. Such converts become soul winners, not pew warmers. Laborers, not layabouts. Assets not liabilities for the local church. And now, saints, with every head raised and every eye open and no music playing, let me challenge you as to the validity of your salvation. Modern evangelism says never question your salvation. The Bible says the exact opposite. It says examine yourself and see if you're in the faith. Better now than on the day of judgment. The Bible says make your calling and election sure. And some of you know that something is radically wrong in your Christian walk. You lose your peace and joy when the flight gets bumpy. There is a lack of zeal to evangelize. You never fell on your face before a mighty God and said, I've sinned against you, O oh God. Have mercy upon me. You've never fled to Jesus Christ and his blood for cleansing. In desperation, crying out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And there's a lack of gratitude. There's not a burning zeal for the lost. You can't say you're on fire for God. In fact, you're in danger of being one of the ones that are called lukewarm and will be spewed out of the mouth of Christ on the day of judgment. When multitudes will cry out to Jesus, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, lawlessness. I never knew you. No regard to the divine law. The Bible says that everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity, lawlessness. So today you need to readjust the motive for your commitment. Friend, don't let your pride stop you. I would like to pray for you. I'll remain up here. You remain in your seat. If you'd like to be included in this prayer, I'd like you to slip up your hand. But remember this. If you say, well, I should put my hand up, but what will people think? That's pride. You prefer the praises of men to the praises of God. <laughs> if you want to win and win every time, simply do not get in the ring. Get in the ring. Get in the ring. Get in the ring. Uh, at the risk of sounding negative, I need to tell you that if you get in the ring with the enemy, he's going to put your lights out. I, I, I want to tell you that if you get in the ring with the enemy, blow for blow, punch for punch, you're not ready for the level of warfare you're going to be hit with. He'll hit you in your finances and then uppercut you through your marriage and he'll come back and put you in a full Nelson uh, in your emotions and then he'll put a full Charlie on you in your mind and you're tied up and you're tangled up and you're confused and after a while, 
you start going down but if you if you just stay out of the ring and start throwing a few scriptures uh, across the ropes and and, and telling tell him something like the, the, the battle is is not mine it, it belongs to god and, and if you tell him my god shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory if you tell him i can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens me. If you tell him, Satan, the blood is against you. If, if you don't know any scriptures, tell him, devil, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. And, um, but Jesus actually knew that there'd be confusion. He said, in the last days, there'll be many false prophets. Uh, if anyone says they know the day and the hour, that we should especially be on our guard. And so, uh, you know, we believe it is going to happen. I, if, if you look in, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus tells a number of signs and he talks about earthquakes and floods and famines and uh, it basically says that these are the beginning mm -hmm. of sorrows.